Come on, come clean with me. And while we're cleaning, let's talk about how to create to-do lists that are effective and help you feel empowered. Welcome to my home. My name is Karen, if you're new here, and I love to provide real life help for when life gets real. There's no one who loves working off a to-do list more than I do. I just love to check the boxes and to feel that sense of accomplishment. But I have been so guilty of creating to-do lists that could not possibly happen in one, two, or three days. Now, I don't mind if my to-do list takes me more than one day. I'm a firm believer that if you don't finish it the first day, just pick up where you left off the next day. However, I do believe there needs to be a balance there because we can create to-do lists that are just completely impossible and leave us feeling defeated and even lazy when the issue was really our own expectations of ourselves and the way that we write the to-do list. And that's what I'd love to talk about today. When writing our to-do list, it's important that it does not become a brain dump. Something that's a brain dump isn't writing down tasks, it's writing down large projects and lots of them because you're just trying to brainstorm how many things you would love to see done. I'm very committed to making my house a place that I want to live in and my family would like to live in. And although that does include home improvement projects and you have been seeing our home improvement projects on my channel, it is not limited to that. In fact, I think more importantly are those day-to-day -day tasks that we do that keep the home running smoothly and keep it from becoming a disaster. I love a good brain dump and I think it's very valuable. I participate in morning pages, which is basically just filling a journal in the morning of three pages with whatever comes to mind. My daughter, Rachel, she does that sort of thing at night because that is when she is more clear-minded and more creative. And I think you have to do what works for your own brain. And then my to-do list oftentimes comes out of those morning pages, but there is a difference that I'd like to explain. When we're writing out our to-do list, it's very important that it's task-oriented and not project-oriented. A project, for example, would be clean the bathroom. If I wanted to give myself three to four tasks a day and they were clean the bathroom, clean the kitchen, clean the living room, I would definitely not get through that list in a day. Not only would I not get through that list in a day, I would feel defeated that I could not get through three things on a list, even though those three things are absolutely huge. It's much better for me if instead of saying clean the bathroom, I say clean the bathroom sinks and mirrors, dust the lights, clean the toilet, wash the floor. Those are very concrete, doable tasks. It's also much easier to anticipate how much time those tasks will take and where I can fit them into my day. It's also much easier if I get interrupted and I never get back to that room, it's much easier to know the next day what has been done and what hasn't been done. It's also much easier to delegate those tasks to someone else in the family if I have them written down in detail. If you're familiar with programs like the Fly Lady, you could understand now why it is so completely popular. The Fly Lady never says, clean your kitchen today. No, she has that in a zone. And so you're cleaning that kitchen for the week, taking on one piece at a time every day. She has broken down each part of your home into zones, and then she gives you very actionable, small tasks to do every day. And she has a very clearly developed morning routine and evening routine to keep the house running smoothly in the background and then you're focusing on one area at a time. If it interests you to not have to come up with those tasks yourself, I do have a Fly Lady playlist that I will leave linked below and so that you can see me work through my home on the Fly Lady. We interrupt this video for a little cute cat clip. Woozy would like to say hello. <laughs> There's nothing Woozy loves more than being near where someone is working. I think he wants to be a foreman. <laughs> 
If you're trying to come up with your own morning routine and evening routine, I will leave mine linked in the description box below. Basically, I'm trying to keep up with emptying the dishwasher in the morning so people can put their dirty dishes in there and then switching over laundry and getting it divided so people can fold and put away their own clean clothes and then put their dirty clothes right in the washing machine and then I go to making my bed. Once that's done, I get my breakfast if I'm eating breakfast and I read my Bible, I pray, I do my morning pages and I get those things done like getting dressed, putting on my makeup and doing my hair that make me feel like I'm ready for the day. When I'm making a video in the morning, I do usually get up and get dressed and get myself looking presentable so that I can make my video without cringing when I watch it back later. However, on a normal morning, my first priority is a dishwasher and my second priority is the laundry. My evening routine doesn't really even include me because I am no good at night, but it is the kids all getting an after supper chore to get all of the dishes and the kitchen and dining room cleaned up so that we're waking up to a cleaner house in the morning. Back to my morning. Once I've had my Bible and prayer time and I've done my morning pages, then I am looking at whatever the priority is for me that day. I am making my to-do list and I'm writing down the tasks that I want done. And then I'm seeing what can I delegate because each of my kids gets one chore a day that normally takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And that way they're also helping me with the task. So I don't use chore lists for them. I used to do that. But I'm finding right now in this stage of life, it is better for me if I'm writing down what I want done that day and then I am letting them help me with that by handing out those chores to them each day. As I write those chore lists for the kids, I'm keeping in mind tasks that are hard for me since I have chronic back pain and also just things I might not have time to do that day. Things that each of those kids tend to be good at, I will give them that chore. So some days I'm giving a specific chore to a specific child and some days I am letting them pick the chore that they would like to do. If you would like to come up with your own system that works for your home, in order to come up with a morning routine, my suggestion is think of those things that will help your home stay clean throughout the day. Then in the evening routine, think of those things that will help you have the home that you want to wake up to. When it comes to daily tasks, you could take however many days you want to clean every week and then divide your home up into those days. For example, if you have six rooms and you want to clean three days, you would be working on two rooms a day. Then brainstorm the things that you want done weekly or even daily and write down those things and on those days, you can be pecking away at those lists and writing a to-do list from your brainstorming page. Whether you wanna be planning it ahead or doing it on the fly, the point is to be scheduling yourself manageable tasks that are easily definable and able to be accomplished in the day. So maybe I know that the living room is something I'm gonna be working on every Tuesday. This Tuesday, I am working on vacuuming the furniture for my project. So I know that that's done and next week, I might work on washing the floors. I had time on this day to vacuum the floors and vacuum the furniture, but I didn't have time to wash walls or deal with cobwebs or wash the floors. There were things that I did not have time to do and that is okay. If I would have just said clean the living room, then I would have been pretty sad that those other items didn't get done. I would love if you'd let me know in the comment section if what I am saying makes sense of just making small actionable tasks and that is where your to-do list comes from so that you're not overwhelming yourself and that you actually have time to take breaks 
to refresh yourself and to not feel like you either are working all day or you are admitting defeat because those two extremes are not good. If there was ever a time where we needed to keep our mental state in balance, it is this year. We have to protect ourselves. We need to protect our mental state. It's a good thing to want to have a clean, organized home that runs smoothly and that is peaceful, but it is not worth making ourselves sick. It is not worth overdoing it. It is not worth feeling defeated and discouraged. It's not worth telling ourselves it's that we're lazy. We need to be able to take breaks. We need to be able to enjoy life and not let our home take us over because no one loves a home that becomes a slave master. Now, I need your help. I have a few questions that I would love if you would be willing to answer in the comment section. I will also post these as the first comment and pin them. And these are the questions. What would you say is your biggest challenge in keeping your home? What is the most important question you want answered when it comes to your home? What is your biggest problem in getting done the things around the home that you want done? What is your biggest roadblock as a homemaker? If you could answer one or all of these questions in the comment section, you would help me so much because I really want to make videos that help you. I appreciate you more than you could ever know. Your comments in the comment section are just so encouraging to me and I am so enjoying getting to know all of you. If you've never commented before, you might not know, I do answer all of my comments and I would love to get to know you better. If you follow me on Instagram and you'll find my Instagram link in the description box below and I don't follow you back, I want you to send me a direct message and I will take care of that right away because I absolutely love seeing pictures of you, pictures of your family and the things that you're putting on Instagram. And I hope you know that God loves you so much and I love you too. I love creating videos for you, but more importantly, I love getting to know you. I love feeling like I can encourage and help you in your journey. There's my dirt for the day. <laughs> and I can't wait to see you next time.